what, what the haters talking about. What's up, family? O.J. Simpson appeared before a Nevada parole board today to ask for release from prison after serving more than eight years of a 33-year sentence steaming from a 2007 armed robbery in Las Vegas. O.J., who was acquitted in the murders of his ex-wife, Nicole Brown Simpson, and her friend, Ronald Goldman, in 1995, was quizzed by a four-member panel that decided to grant the former football player parole. I tell you, incredible to me because out the gate, I just felt like OJ really didn't represent himself well in that hearing. Personally, I'm indifferent, but I do believe he killed them people. I am indifferent to whether he's, you know, free, because I mean, really, if you really think about it, he did nine years for murder. He really didn't do his time for that robbery. Because y'all know that they overcharged him. 33 years for armed robbery, for going to retrieve your own property. You're going to get 33 years in jail for going to get your own property from somebody. To take back your own property. 33 years? So y'all know... That was for that double homicide. He got convicted for that double homicide. And they laid into him. So, but something tells me OJ is not going to chill. I don't think he has any chill. I don't think he going to lay low. I think OJ is hard-headed. I think he, he's very uh, self-aggrandizing. I don't think that he is going to chill out. I think that OJ is going to do something else. And if he does, he'll probably die in prison. They'll probably make him do the rest of that time. That's crazy. What was, uh, what was, what was telling to me was that I can't believe that they actually granted him the parole. I mean, I thought they was going. I thought they was going to stick with the guns. You know, you know, they was under a lot of pressure from their community to to hang them high. I believe if if, if it had been anybody else, I think most people, the majority of people, would have said he did it. But because it was OJ, uh, people were like, nah, he didn't do it, and it was high profile. But also because. The American justice system haven't given black people a lot of justice. And right or wrong, people wanted to see a black man beat the system because the system has beaten the black man for so long. And I think it just really boiled down to that. It's really as simple as that. Most people who were in favor of OJ, I think most people, like if they really, really really just was honest with themselves, I think that most people would say, yeah, it was, for me, it was a black man beating the system. You know, that's why I think most people who supported him, supported him. Now, OJ, during the, during, during the, the hearing for parole, I don't think he did a very good job of representing himself. And I'm going to tell you, kids, don't try this at home. For all you people out there who may have watched that, uh, watched, watched the hearing and saw OJ give his testimony, don't try that at home. Don't try it at home because OJ was, he was defiant, combative. He was, arrogant and and he was trying to shift the blame he would not take full responsibility and I do believe had it not been for his exemplary conduct while he was in prison and the fact that the world was watching this hearing 
they would have, and he had just been another black man, they would have stuck him back up under that jail cell. They would have put him right back where he was. Because that's not how you conduct yourself when you go before these, these panels, these parole panels, and these courts. You, you don't do that. You, they want to see you not only remorseful, they want to see you broken. So you got to kind of like play the game. If you got, you got to play the game if you want to go home. You know, if you don't care about going home, you say, fuck the system, I don't give a damn what happened. Just kill me, nigga, kill me. I die in prison. You know, you want to be like that, then go ahead. But I don't think OJ did a good job representing himself. So, I mean, he did good to get off, so I guess he did enough. But I don't think he did a good job. I think that that guy, uh, Bruce Fremont, his friend, did a much better job than he did, or his lawyer did, because his lawyer seemed like his lawyer seemed like he was trying to damn get him put in jail. The lawyer seemed like he was doing his job was to try to keep him in jail. And the daughter came with a prepared statement, and that was very lackluster. I mean, it was just it was it was just very very weak, and I thought that he was jeopardizing his case. Also, uh, and, he, and this is what I'm doing. I'm giving y'all my, my takeaways on here. Um, when he said that there were no guns in the room, he told the parole panel that he did not <laughs> know that there were guns in the room. That's ludicrous. How could you not know that, well, I guess you could know that there wasn't any guns in the room, but once somebody pulls out a gun and they're with you, how could you not know? One of the guys testified that the guy pulled the gun and put it in his face. Now, how could some guys come into a small room, a very small room, let them tell it? And one of my goons pull out a gun. First of all, it's... America that I don't see a gun or somebody with me pulling out a gun in a small room, even if they wasn't with me. They pull out a gun in a small room. That's one thing. I don't see that. But they point the gun in somebody's face and I don't see that? Come on, man. OJ had nine years to come up with his alibi. <laughs> you know, he had nine years to come up with a good story, and that's the best story that he could come up with. Where is Johnny Cochran when you need him? Now, uh, and here's the thing too, like, he shouldn't have went into details. I know he got paroled, but I'm telling y'all, this is special circumstances. Don't try this for yourself, and don't advise your family members to try what OJ did. <laughs> I'm telling you, he should not have went into details. What he should have done is just been remorseful, showed them that he was remorseful, and talked about how he was taking full responsibility. They love it when you take full responsibility. You take full responsibility, you show remorse, you talk about what you've learned in the interim between being where you are at this moment and from the time that the crime occurred and where you're going from this point on. How are you going to make your life better and do better by the people? That's the way the, he should have conducted himself. Going into uh, the, the commissioner's decision, uh, and this was very, very also telling because it was no, no secret, I mean, I, I, you saw what I saw, and that is the all-white parole board judging a black male deciding his future whether he gets to parole or not. 
Now, I know that everybody's looking at this and saying, well, that's a, they did the right thing. You know, they let them go. What else do you want? You know, that means that they're fair and impartial. No, it don't. That means that this was a high-profile case, just like his initial murder was. The murder, the murder was. And he got off because of his influence, his connections, his resources, his fame in, in these type of cases, I do believe that what America is racially divided, man. Let's stop living in la-la land. Let's stop faking. America is racially divided. Therefore, and it's, there's a lot of friction in race relations. It's hard to tell who's a racist, who's harboring racist ideologies, and who's not. So at the minimum, and then I know you got a lot of coons out there, so, you know, that's, that's hard to, you know, it's hard to figure out. But a black person stand a whole lot better chance being judged by black people, being judged fairly by a black person. And likewise, I think that a white person have a much better chance of being judged fairly by a white person. And on and on and on. There needs to be more diversity in these parole boards. There needs to be more diversity in the courts. There needs to be more diversity in the police departments. I do believe that because there is such a huge uh, disparity in the way that we treat each other based on race in the United States, I think that it needs to be more diversity. One of the things that I saw that kind of uh, gave me a little hesitation that I thought that was not working in his favor is when he, he I thought that he was being a little too bubbly. I thought he was, it was a little bit too much giggling going on, a little, much, a little too much he he and ha ha and going on for a man who was fighting for his freedom. Had he not been granted parole, he would have had to wait another year. And then if he had not been granted parole on that one, he'd have to wait another three years. And he could have done up to 33 years on that sentence. So I thought it was too much laughing and joking going on. A lot of times these parole board uh, members and people in the courts, they tend to think that when you're laughing, even if something is really, really funny, everybody can laugh except you. Because they tend to think that when, if you're laughing, you're not really taking it that seriously. And maybe you need to do some more time to get your mind right. So I thought that that was a mistake. Again, boys and girls, don't try that at home. I thought that his daughter, again, uh, spoke. When she spoke, she had a lot of time to prepare a statement. I felt like she had just prepared that statement before she walked into the... I felt, really, I felt like she walked into that hearing and prepared her statement right there as it started because it just didn't seem like it was really effective. The guy... OJ's friend Bruce Fremong did a much better job at um, at advocating for him, advocating for his freedom. He did a much better job. So OJ will be out October first or soon thereafter. And really, whether you are for or against OJ Simpson, that's a good thing. Because if they let O.J. out, he can go out there and find the killers. No more talk. What, what, what the ladies talking about? Damn. Order, Texas.